أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلقه وخاتم أنبيائه وسيد رسله نبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من أول يوم ظلمهم إلى قيام يوم الدين قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل لا أسألكم عليه أجرا إلا المودة في القربة آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Respected viewers, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In the previous episode we discussed one of the most critical sermons delivered in the history of Islam and that was the sermon known as al khutbatul Fadakiya by the Sayyidatul Nisa, the great lady Fatima al-Zahra salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayha as a prelude, as an introduction and the background we discussed the surrounding environment and the situation of the time in this regard. The narration, of course, is found in many books of hadith, such as uh, the book of Al-Ihtijaj by uh, Sheikh Al-Tusi and others. We come forward and we find the circumstances or the way that this great la lady emerged to Masjid al-Nabawi has a number of important areas for us to reflect upon. Lathat khimaruha ala ra'siha. She ensured that the hijab was full on her head. That she made sure that the jilbab was completely covering her body and was compatible with Islamic, the dress code of hijab. Now this is important. It highlights that the hijab she was wearing was so loose and long that it was long and therefore she had to somehow, it was being dragged on the ground. It was being dragged because of the fact that it was quite wide and loose. This has been mentioned specifically as a reminder, of course, to our respected sisters when it comes to the Islamic dress code of hijab the dress code of modesty, chastity, honor, the dress code of identity and protection. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed honored our sisters when it comes to hijab, which is defined as the covering of the female's body from top to toe, except the face and the hands up to the wrists, which do not necessarily have to be covered. But the rest have to be covered and it must be loose, it must not be transparent, it must not be attractive deliberately, it must not be tight. So this dress code that is characterized by the great lady Fatima al-Zahra salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayha, this hijab that has been emphasized in the Holy Quran, we have this great role model and her daughter Sayyida Zainab, peace of blessings be upon her, who fought for hijab during the battle of Karbala and the aftermath, and both were the champions of this Islamic obligation, which is clearly ordained in the Holy Quran. As an example, therefore, when we look at the Sermon of Fadek, it reminds us to keep this flag of hijab high, not to be deterred by any attempts in the West or anywhere else to question this particular dress code, this important obligation, as the Quran says, it is better that the Muslim sisters, the ladies, the females are identified through hijab so that they're not protected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to protect the females. It's a source of liberation, a dignity, uh, and honor by Allah, and a continuous reward by Him, Azza wa Jal. The curtain was there, and therefore Sayyida Fatima, peace be upon her, when she reached Masjid al-Nabawi, 
uh, she would stand behind the curtain and the Ansar, the Muhajireen, the companions would be on the other side. Therefore, they would be able to hear the voice of this great lady. However, before she began to speak, the narration tells us, Annat Anna, meaning what? She had one cry. She had one wail. It is as if she expressed her sorrow and her grief in this one method which made people cry and weep, which made people at the outset realize and set the scene for what's about to occur and the words that this great lady was to express and to deliver and to talk about. This is truly unprecedented in history and it sh shows the deep impact of the Ahl al-Bayt on people. Um, when Sayyida Zainab, of course the daughter of Sayyida Fatima, peace be upon them all, when she uh, stood on this Talla Zainabiyya, the small mountain overlooking the body of Sayyida, uh, Sayyida Shuhada Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, and she called out to the uh, army of Yazid, is there anyone amongst you who is a Muslim? This is Hussein ibn Ali, the grandson of the Holy Prophet. How can you do this? How can you allow him to be suffering in such a way? How could you kill him? Uh, the narration says, فَأَبْكَتْ الصَّدِيقُ وَالْعَدُو She made the friend and the foe cry. And this is because they realized that she was saying the truth. She re they realized that she was an individual who is standing up for justice. Sayyida Fatima, of course, peace and blessings be upon her, began the khutbah. And if we were to look at the khutbah, it's divided into several segments, several areas for us to somehow shed some light very briefly to kind of uh, look at uh, some areas. Um, the inspiration that we can take from this lady of Noor, the lady of light, Fatima al-Zahra is in many folds. The, as with the style of the Ahl al-Bayt when it comes to the supplications, uh, the khutbah begins with the expression of gratitude and thankfulness to the, for the absolute perfect being and that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how she starts. Alhamdulillahi ala ma an'am. After, of course, um, this great lady starts with the, the Basmala and the sending of the salutations upon the Holy Prophet and his progeny. And keeping in mind, brothers and sisters, that this lady had gone through a lot and yet she stood there in such a way. She had lost her father. She had been attacked. Her rights had been taken away from her, the land that was given to her, and her husband's rights, the legitimate Khilafah, was usurped. All this, yet she stood in such a manner and said, how, what did she say? Did she first of all say, how could you do this? No. She was the epitome of thankfulness and gratitude. She would say, Alhamdulillahi ala ma an'am, walahu shukru ala ma alham, wa thana'u bima qaddam. She starts with alhamd, then goes to ash-shukr. Of course, this, this alhamd and ash-shukr is understood to be um, an expression of thankfulness, gratitude. Yet the reality is that there is a difference between alhamd and ash-shukr. When we say alhamdulillah, hamd here refers to expressing thankfulness to a being who deserves to be praised and thanked. Why? Not because of what they have given, but intrinsically we feel the need to express thankfulness. Shukr is when somebody gives you something, you return this favor at least by expressing gratitude. That's what shukr is. But hamd is a higher practice. It is when an individual expresses gratitude and thankfulness for that being without necessarily receiving anything. Fatima al-Zahra salawatullahi wa salamu alayha uh, is teaching us, you and I, the spirit of contentment that is known as qana'a and uh, the idea of ar satisfaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's 
command and his decree that despite these tremendously painful episodes in a very short period of time after the martyrdom of the Holy Prophet وسلم, despite this we find that she stands in admiration uh, in total uh, in an admirable way and she says Alhamdulillah ala ma'ana Alhamdulillah notice how her own daughter Sayyida Zainab peace and blessings be upon her in the courtyard of the tyrant she, uh, he asks her, كيف, كيف She says, ما رأيت إلا جميلة. I've not seen except beauty. This is the example of individuals whom have known Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And through them, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is known. When Sayyida Fatima says, Alhamdulillahi ala ma an'am. And Sayyida Zainab says, ما رأيت إلا جميلة. What does it mean? It means رضا الله رضانا أهل البيت نصبر على قضائه ويوفينا أجور الصابرين. Imam Al Hussein Al Shahid, Sayyid Al Shuhad, صلوات الله وسلامه عليه. He says, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's rida is our rida, the أهل البيت. We are patient with His decree, and He grants us the reward reserved for the patient ones. Because they know that this is part of the plan of God. Of course, they are human beings. They are not in any shape or form upset with the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haja lillah. But it is natural for the human being to feel grief and sorrow. But this grief and sorrow is extension of their own mercy. The fact that these human beings have perpetrated some such crimes, have uh, uh, taken property, have usurped haq and the truth. And therefore, these individuals don't look at this world. They're not looking for dunya. They're looking for the pleasure of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Sayyida Fatima alayhi salam is given this particular honor that she is al-radiyatul mardiyya. That her pleasure is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because she's pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, when you look at this part of the sermon, it reminds you of the ayah in the Holy Quran, whereby Allah wa Taala says, "Wala sawfa yu'atika Rabbuka fatarza." Allah wa Taala will give you, Ya Rasulullah, that which has gives happiness to your hearts, and of course, the Almighty did, and that was what Inna a'atina kal kawthar. We have given you kawthar, and of course, kawthar is Fatima al Zahra. Peace and blessings be upon her and her holy progeny. You look at the uh, emphasis that Sayyida Fatima at the outset has said to you and I, an important lesson when we look at the khutbah, that take seriously thankfulness. Thankfulness is not only to be uh, happy with the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying Alhamdulillah, shukran lillah, but to demonstrate this in actions and not to abuse and unfortunately disuse or disrespect the bounties of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything that causes his wrath or anger or the disobedience of our Lord Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. The Ahl al-Bayt alayhum salam would continuously encourage the concept of shukr Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al sadiq salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, a man comes to him, an individual who is a beggar and is asking for some help. Imam al sadiq alayhi salam had some grapes. He gives the grapes to this individual. This man expresses thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, says Alhamdulillah. Imam alayhi salam says to him, wait. He gives, he asks his servant, uh, get me what we have in the house from the money. So he gives him the money and this man says, Ash-shukrullah, or to that extent, some expression of thankfulness. Imam Ali salam says to him, wait, he gives him, for instance, for, uh, uh, as an example, his cloak, his holy cloak. This man goes away. The indication Imam Ali salam says is because the Quran says, Wala in shakartum la azidannakum. If you are thankful, I will give you more and more. And Imam Ali Salam demonstrated this in reality.
she then moves on to the idea of what the idea of Tawheed, monotheism, and expresses the belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like Imam Zain al Abidin al Sajjad salawatullahi wa salamhu alayhi, when the Mu'addin stood up and recited the Adhan and said, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, he said, Shahida bidalika. Jildi wa lahmi wa dami. My skin, my flesh, my blood bears witness that there is no Lord except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because our lives revolve around Tawheed and the oneness of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we will discuss the other segments briefly of the sermon of this great lady in the following episodes. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على أشرف الخلق وخاتم الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين